Ah, stop, put that soft gel down. It might be rancid. You don't want that in your body. Rancidity, oxidation, these are all things that we need to consider. But I wanna be able to give some instructions on how to choose a fish oil pill. Okay, I go to the grocery store all the time and I do these hauls. Pretty much all the fish oils that are here, I would just scrap, okay? And I do these things, but I have to be, I don't know, kind of quick and I have to have some brevity with it because I'm usually trying to not to get kicked out of a grocery store. So anyhow, I wanna be able to explain how you can choose the right thing. So we're gonna cover the whole rancidity thing, the oxidation thing. We're gonna cover what kinds of fish oil you need to be paying attention to. We're gonna cover uh, all the way down to like what even like tines, like triglyceride forms and ethyl ester forms. Okay, and then we're gonna get down to even some of the manufacturing and some of the things called Totox scores. So it'll basically be a complete buyer's guide so that you can look at the uh, you know thousands of different fish oil bottles that are on the shelves these days. Let's go ahead and break it down. Today's video sponsor is something a little bit different. If you've been following for a long time, you know that before I had kids, I was obsessed with my dogs. Well, I still am obsessed with my dogs. But I had four, one made it all the way to 18, now I've got three. So I really do care about how my dogs feel. They're all pretty old now. I've got a 15 year old, I've got a 12 year old, and I've got a 10 year old dog. They're all getting to the senior ages and paying extra attention to helping them feel good. So today's video sponsor is a product called Sundays for Dogs. It is the first human grade air dried dog food. It is awesome okay there is not a single grain in this stuff there's not it's just a single thing that you wouldn't recognize it's everything that you would find on a grocery store shelf like turmeric you've got usda grade beef it's got liver it's got everything that i would want to give to my dogs and i figure people that watch my channel are conscious of their health and a lot of times <laughs> they put their dogs before themselves I figure it's very very relevant and plus it's a nice way for me to be able to show like my life and a little bit about my dogs and like what i do when i'm not filming videos and researching things it's also a super cool brand it was built by a new york city vet that was tired of like the typical kind of dog food and in fact if you go on their websites they compare sundays to 3,000 different kinds of dog food. So you can literally go on their website and see, well, okay, how does it compare to the dog food that I'm currently taking? And in taste tests with dogs, Sundays 1, 20 to 0. Okay, now, I mean, look at the footage. My dogs are obviously digging it, okay? So there is a special link down below because they are a sponsor and it saves you 35% off your first order, okay? So you go to sundaysfordogs.com slash Thomas. sundaysfordogs.com slash Thomas or just use the code Thomas at checkout. So I went ahead and I put that link down below in the description. So a big thank you to them for the support on this channel and a big thank you to them for helping my little man, Timmy, keep on rocking and feeling good. Use that link down below. First thing I want to address is the oxidation piece. Okay, this is an important one because people will rain on the omega-3 parade all the time. They'll say, if you have these omega-3 pills and you leave them out, they're going to go bad, they're going to go rancid, and then you're gonna take it and it's gonna become poison. In some ways, that is true. In some ways, it is not, okay? And it comes down to a couple of different things. First thing you have to look at when you are looking at a label of an omega-3 pill or soft gel or whatever, is it an ethyl ester form? And it will say that. It will say essential fatty acids, it will say uh, you know, omega-3 fatty acids, whatever kind of fatty acid pill you're buying, and it will say you know, in an ethyl esterized form or ethyl esterized soft gel. It's said a lot of different ways, but somewhere on there you will see either ethanol or ethyl ester. I would highly recommend avoiding those, okay? Now, I'll explain some data here in just a second, but what you want to go for is a triglyceride form. Now, sometimes brands don't even necessarily tout that they're using a triglyceride form. It just shows up on the label because the absence of ethyl ester being on the label. So look for things that don't have that ethyl ester. Does that mean that the ethyl ester is bad? No, but there is some interesting data that shows that it's not as stable. There's a study that's published in the journal of the American Oil Chemist Society, okay, and this took a look at just that. It took a look at triglyceride form omega-3s, and it took a look at the other form, the ethyl ester form of omega-3s. And they tested it throughout a wide variety of temperatures, and by and large, throughout all temperature ratings, the ethyl ester form had higher oxidation rates. Okay, oxidation is exactly what we're paying attention to here. Polyunsaturated fatty acids have a tendency to oxidize at various temperatures, and it can depend on the range, it can depend on the fat chain, all this stuff. Okay, but if you have something that is less sustainable throughout various temperatures, then you're gonna run the risk of it being rancid. Now, what's gonna happen if you take a rancid fish oil pill? I mean, to some degree, not a whole lot. It might give you an upset stomach, but you also might end up increasing your levels of reactive oxygen species in the body. 
potentially some oxidative stress, right? Like kind of the things we try to avoid with antioxidants. Really kind of the thing, a lot of the thing we're trying to avoid by taking a fish oil pill in the first place. So a lot of times they just kind of become useless. I wouldn't say they become hugely detrimental unless the fat has really gone bad. But that brings me to the next thing you need to pay attention to. Is there any other oil in that soft gel? Okay, there really shouldn't be a lot of other oil. Sometimes you'll find a little bit of sunflower oil and stuff, but you really have to look out for soybean oil. You have to look out for safflower oil, cottonseed oil, grapeseed oil, and even sunflower oil. Okay, sometimes you'll see some high oleic oils, which are a little bit better because they're more stable. So if you see fish oil combined with a high oleic XYZ, high oleic sunflower oil, I wouldn't be super quick to throw it away, but it's probably going to be more middle ground. Okay, here's the deal. Like when you have those like omega sixes that are, are going to be in those fats, first of all, you are contradicting the entire point of taking an omega three. Omega threes and omega sixes compete for the same conversion enzyme. So if you're taking in omega sixes in the way of sunflower oil and safflower oil, it doesn't mean omega sixes are necessarily terrible. But why would you take them alongside an omega three when they're going to compete for the same conversion enzyme in the body? Okay, not to mention those kind of vegetable oils are unstable. Those are the ones that have a higher tendency to go rancid, less so than the fish oil. Okay, but let's talk about absorption for just a second and talk about that triglyceride form for just a minute too. Regardless of what fish oil pill you take, and again, we're going to talk about the different kinds in just a moment. Again, opt for the triglyceride just because of the absorption piece. The European Journal of Clinical Nutrition had published a paper where they took a look at subjects that consumed either the ethyl ester form of an omega-3, a control or a placebo in this case, and a triglyceride form of omega-3. Now here's the cool thing. They had them do this for six months, okay? Now after six months, they found that the triglyceride form led to a 186% increase in omega-3s in the cellular membrane, whereas the ethyl ester form only 161% increase. Okay, that doesn't sound like a huge difference, but statistically that's actually quite a bit. Okay, and that's doing the same thing, taking the same amount, the same amount of time. So triglyceride forms are just going to absorb better. But then we have to talk about the actual utilization within the body. In a triglyceride form, a lot of times you are more likely to have other supporting compounds, i.e. vitamin A. Like cod liver oil is a perfect example, and I'll save you a lot of time and energy. Cod liver oil in a triglyceride form is what I would opt for because you're also getting supporting vitamin A, you're getting of course the omega-3, and you're getting bioavailable vitamin D3. Okay, not in a synthetic form where we normally would be taking vitamin D3. Okay, so three things that work really, really well in tandem together. Okay, so you want to be paying attention to that just for the absorption itself. Now let's focus on what kinds you want to be paying attention to. Okay, usually you want to go for the smaller fish. Okay. Now that's going to be common. Most fish oil companies out there now have gotten wise to this and they'll say, oh, okay, it's anchovies or sardines or whatever. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's amazing, right? Because there's all these other things we have to look at. You always want to get fish that's from cold water, okay? So like sometimes you find uh, fish oil that's sourced like out of the Pacific that's not going to be in the colder regions. That means the omega-3 content, the fat content is not going to be as high, but you don't always know that data because every single fish oil out there is going to tout some kind of over-marketed benefit, right? But one of the things that you can look at is, well, what fish is this source from? So if you get down to the nitty gritty, I really do like what's called calamarine oil. Okay, calamarine oil is just like the name implies, it's derived from calamari. Okay, short lifespan. Okay, a shorter lifespan means that it has less time in the water absorbing potentially toxic things. Okay, plus calamari by its very nature has a little bit of like a uh, rubbery shell, right? So you're potentially kind of deflecting things. Uh, that's another reason why I like krill oil. Okay, krill oil is another one that's great. Small, low on the food chain. Okay, so that means that it has a shorter life, but it's also the one that is supporting the other fish. Okay, so then when you get smaller down the food chain, you have a potentially better omega-3. Uh, it's a good time for me to mention as well that you can even get omega-3s in an algal form. Okay, people ask about that all the, all the time, right? Algal oil, basically algae oil, okay, that is very rich in omega-3s, predominantly DHA, docosahexaenoic acid. What's interesting is there's a fermentation process for DHA to turn into EPA. And when fish and when plankton and everything eat the algae and the fish eat the plankton, all this stuff, 
That is how fish end up with their omega-3 content. They don't magically have it. They're not just magically born with it. They get it from the food that they eat as well. Okay, they have the ability to convert DHA into EPA, and that's where that kind of ratio comes from. So the lower down the food chain, the better in this particular case. Then we have, of course, cod liver oil, which is going to be richer in vitamin A because it's coming from the liver of cod. Now, cod is typically a cold water fish, but it's also not the highest fat content. But the fat content of the liver of cod is a little bit higher. So in this case, you're getting that oil, which is, in my opinion, once again, largely beneficial. And then as you start getting up the larger and larger fish, the concentrated forms of the fish oil aren't as good because a lot of times to make them stable, they're bound to ethyl esters. And at that rate, you're better off just going with the food itself. And then we have salmon oil, which is interesting. Salmon oil is pretty common, and you know Costco sells a salmon oil. Now, the issue with salmon oil, once again, the ethyl ester thing you have to keep an eye out for. But what I do like about salmon oil, as well as krill, is they have what is called astaxanthin in it. Okay, astaxanthin is that reddish, pinkish pigment, okay, and that is a powerful antioxidant that does, in some ways, preserve the omega-3 within the capsule, but it also has additional benefits in our bodies as well. So it's not a bad antioxidant to take, um, and it can potentially modulate some of the lipid peroxidation, the, the prospect of it going rancid. So it's something to be paying attention to. Again, you gotta find one that is a lot more fresh and isn't you know, in a full triglyceride form. So anyway, just to recap, okay, triglyceride, non-ethyl ester. The smaller the fish, the better. Definitely keep an eye out for any kind of added oils or anything like that. Keep an eye out for added colors because yes, you can absolutely see that. Okay, also look at something called the Totox score. Okay, if you're really serious about it, find a brand you like and contact them and ask them for a Totox score. If they're not doing a Totox test, you probably should encourage them to because that's gonna actually give a rating of the likelihood of that pill going rancid. Okay, in terms of like what their standards are. Do they catch it and then immediately put it in the dark and keep it cold? Or do they catch it and then let the fish just sit out there for three days while they finish their run, right? So you have to look at that whole equation. I hope this video cleared some things up. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.